मिलेरिया इज अ डिजीज ऑफ नो मिलेरिया इज टिपिकली अ डिजीज ऑफ द एक्राइन स्वेट डक्ट नो एक्राइन स्वेट डक्ट बेसिकली ओपन डायरेक्टली टू द आउटसाइड लाइक दिस टू द स्किन एंड वेन द ऑक्लूजन हैपन्स ऑफ दिस विद द बैक्टीरिया विच इज स्टैफ एपिडर्मिडस then that causes the inflammation of malaria which is typically a summer disease in summer months it happens this staph epidermidis releases polysaccharides and these polysaccharides will create the inflammation of the disease and that answer would then be eccrine glands typically malaria is a disease of eccrine glands sebaceous glands acne is a disease of sebaceous glands hypocrine glands fox fordyce disease and hydra dinitis superativa are both diseases of eccrine of apocrine glands okay that is the first question then second question which is a correct combination erythema infectiosum tb is wrong erythema infectiosum ei is basically caused by a virus which is parvovirus b19 and this parvovirus basically creates fever in a child and a rash and this rash is typically on the cheek and we get what we call as a slapped cheek appearance in erythema infectiosum and that's what we need you to understand so it's a wrong thing erythema marginatum it is seen in rheumatic fever okay so not parvovirus it's seen in rheumatic fever it's basically erythematous rash typically in the criteria for diagnosis for rheumatic fever erythema multiforme is typically seen with herpes simplex which commonest cause of erythema multiforme which is basically a target lesion which comes typically not sarcoidosis Sarcoidosis will have erythema nodosum, not erythema multiforme. Erythema chronicum migrans is correct. It is a feature of Lyme disease. Erythema chronicum migrans is basically a target lesion which comes with a bite by a heart tick, and that typically creates later on a Lyme disease. Typically, that's the correct option here. Third question: Which of the following statements is true for the painful lesion shown in the image below? Now, what do you see here? A red shin. lesions right and that typically is something which is seen in erythema nodosum en is a very typical non ulcerated nodule typically on the shin as a marker of inflammation it's a inflammation of the fat so it's a deep fat inflammation which is called as paniculitis in in fact it is a type of septal paniculitis it's triggered by many things for example some people common very commonly it is triggered by streptococcal pharyngitis it's triggered by pregnancy it's triggered by sarcoidosis it's triggered by besets disease sweet syndrome some drug sometimes hematological malignancies in plenty of causes ocipels for example okay so this is erythema nodosum typically but the same nodule if it would come on the calf we would think of tuberculosis here we would think of erythema nodosum so let's look at the correct uh, 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 option here form of vasculitis no it's a type of paniculitis not vasculitis superficial skin inflammation no it's a deep fat inflammation not a superficial skin inflammation commonly ulcerated no it's a non ulcerated lesion what is correct is it associated with streptococcus is correct because many times streptococcal pharyngitis might be the reason especially in children it's quite common infections are quite common as a trigger for erythema nodosum a 10 year old boy presented with a boggy painful swelling on the scalp multiple sinuses with purulent discharge easily plucable hair and enlarged lymph nodes in the occipital region which of the following would be the most helpful for diagnosis now boggy swelling is a term which is typically used for the disease called carrion carrion is a disease of scalp it's basically a type of tinea capitis it is a type of tinea capitis and typically creates inflammation and sinuses so basically the draining sinuses inflammation and draining sinuses which will come purulent discharge from the sinus and easily plucable hair again is a classical sign of all tinea capitis not necessarily only carrion now carrion is a type of inflammatory tinea capitis there are non inflammatory types also but this is a type of inflammatory tinea capitis other being favus so there are two types of inflammatory tinea capitis carrion and favus the boggy swelling and again inflammation see in large lymph nodes again point to that which of the following would be most helpful for diagnosis and we would say kvh mount this is a fungal mount of dermatophytes dermatophytes and you can get kvh mount done for that biopsy not required bacterial culture it's not a bacterial infection it's a fungal infection patch test is usually done for allergic contact dermatitis no relation on this all right okay now 
सो कॉजेस ऑफ सिकॉटेशन एलोपेशन इंक्लूड ऑल एक्सेप्ट ना एली लुकस एथिमाटोस आइदर ऑफ डी एल ई टाइप और एस एल ई टाइप ना डी एल ई कॉजेस कारिंग एलोपेशिया एस एल ई कॉजेस कारिंग और नॉन स्कारिंग बोथ आर पॉसिबल टेलोजन इज ओनली नॉन स्कारिंग एलोपेशिया एल पी इज ओनली स्कारिंग एलोपेशिया एंड डी एंटीनिया इज नॉन स्कारिंग नॉन स्कारिंग और स्कारिंग बोथ आर पॉसिबल ओके सो नाउ सी दिस द क्वेश्चन इज विच वन ओके कॉज ऑफ सिकॉर्ड ऑल एक्सेप्ट ना टेलोजन एफ्लूवियम ओके कैन नेवर कॉज स्कारिंग एलोपेशिया सो कॉज ऑफ स्कारिंग एलोपेशिया आर एल ई इज अ कॉज राइट लाइक इज अ कॉज एंड इवन टीनिया इज अ कॉज ऑफ स्कारिंग एलोपेशिया सो वॉट इज नॉट अ कॉज इज द सेकेंड ऑप्शन which is telogen effluvium which is typically a response to typhoid or anemia or stress or pregnancy or something of that sort and that is why it's always non scarring means there is always potential for hair to come back in this particular thing if the cause is removed okay question number 6 now all are true statements regarding leprosy except so you have to pick the false statement now possible absolute leprosy means person having 1 to 5 is correct pb leprosy is always defined as till five number of lesions leg regular mdt means patient received three two by third of the month of the month of treatment schedule is correct meaning if the patient takes two third treatment in the designated time for example this 30 days packet if he just finishes 20 days also in that 30 days is okay you know why when we say pb treatment what do we say six months treatment to be finished in maximum nine months so is that not two third time MB we say 12 months treatment to be finished in maximum 18 months is that again not two thirds of the time. So if he finishes two thirds of the time, it's okay. Ultimately he'll have to complete the full course. But in the duration which is given to him, even if he finishes two third, he is on schedule to complete. There's no problem. But if he completes lesser than that, then he's a defaulter. Then he has to start again. Okay. So that means he's on regular MDT. Lepra reaction is usually initiated usually after initiation of treatment. Correct. When there's release of antigens after treatment has been initiated, that release of antigen triggers the lepra reaction. That that usually happens after therapy. Lepromin is used for treatment initiation. No, that's incorrect. And that is the answer here. Lepromin is for prognosis. We don't use that to decide whether treatment has to be given or no. Treatment initiation happens from PBMB classification. Possibly multi-basilary classification, not really from a lepromin classification. Okay, right. Question number seven now. The most common association with irregular pitting of nails and onychoriasis. Irregular pit is typically seen with psoriasis. Regular pitting is seen with alopecia. Irregular is uh, psoriasis. Also, onychoriasis can be caused by psoriasis. Onychoriasis means separation of the nail plate from the nail bed. So we have a diagnosis of psoriasis. So then extensor plaques, extensor area plaques. Now violaceous papules would be if you suspected LP. LP would not only really be mentioned by pitting. LP will have something like pterygium formation or thinning of nail, something of that sort. Cicatrous alopecia again would be if, if you thought of LP of the nails. Exclamation hair would be if you thought of alopecia areata. Now, alopecia areata typically is a nail finding. Okay. Which has these small, small vertical pits. Okay, these are called as regular pits. So regular pits typically are a sign of alopecia. So here we are talking about irregular pits. So we will not really look at exclamation hair as well. So answer is extensor plaques. Question number eight regarding LP, all are true except now hypopigmentation residual lesion. That is untrue. Why? Because LP always heals with hyperpigmentation. In fact, LP goes away faster. But that hyperpigmentation of LP takes a long time to resolve. That becomes a cosmetic concern for most people. Lymphocytic infiltration is correct. Lot of lymphocytes come under the dermoepidermal junction. This is called as band of lymphocyte phenomena in LP. Now it is itchy polygonal purple papule. That is typically how LP is described. Skin, hair, and oral mucosa are commonly involved. Yes, skin has a lot of violaceous purple lesion. Hair has scarring alopecia. Oral mucosa has white lacy pattern, and that typically is how we talk about LP. So answer here would be hypopigmented residual lesion, 
is the correct answer on this question. All right, with this, we complete all the eight questions. God bless and keep studying.